I'm always excited about uh, the site, going to the site. I'm always excited, like as I excited, uh, I was first visit uh, 22 years back as a fresh graduate. I still uh, feel same fascination, same uh, excitement before going to the site. And stepping to the site uh, is actually a strange thing. It will tell you uh, the story of the site. It will tell you the context, the surrounding, the climate, uh, each and every aspect of the site. And, and, and you can learn from, you can listen to the site. And you fall in love with the site. And site also fall in love with you. Then, then is the creation starts coming out. Becoming an architect is a very interesting issue for me because I never wanted to be an architect. Uh, I always wanted to be a painter, uh, but my, my parents, particularly my dad, I mean, my father was very much uh, against uh, of becoming a painter, a painter. And one of my cousins at the time came to me and told me that there's a subject which is uh, too much uh, close to oh, artwork. You can do, you can continue your painting journey if you go into the Department of Architecture, you can study architecture. And interestingly, what happened, uh, this department at the time in Bangladesh belongs to the University of Engineering and Technology. So I decided to go for it without having uh, much, uh, without having not much of knowledge about architecture. But I thought my dad would be, would be happy that it's, uh, it's an engineering university. So he thought that I'm going to be an engineer. But I knew that I have nothing to do with engineering. I had something to do with my painting uh, in the name of architecture. So sometimes I used to say that uh, I'm an architect by chance and a and, uh, painter by conviction. I started my uh, projects, architectural projects, uh, in a painterly manner. But you know, in a school, uh, they used to think about uh, the functionality of a project, uh, the other aspects of the project, the measurements of a, of a space and things like that. And I used to miss, miss those things, basically, in the class. And, and I, I, as usual, I was getting poor marks and sometimes the fail grades even. And one of my teachers, you know, once uh, in the second year, he told me that uh, I can't grade you even because you are below, below the failing grade. I, I did one project I remember, it's called Drick Picture Library and Gallery Project. You see, it looks like, uh, like a watercolor. Uh, architecture becomes watercolor. I try to develop the marriage between architecture and painting, and and I think now I think I feel good. I feel good. I don't I don't have any uh, sort of that sort of contradiction with me that uh, whether I'm an architect or an artist, uh, I I continue my journey. Uh, what I feel like to do, I just do. Dhaka is a very, very old city, like um, thousands of years old city. Uh, and it grew up uh, just beside the water. Basically, the name of the river is Buriganga. It's in, it means uh, 
It's the mighty Ganges, this is the old Ganges River. And, but as a city, it, become, it became very prominent in the Great Mughals period. Like uh, 1605, 1605, it became the capital city of the uh, eastern part of the provinces uh, during the Mughal time. So at the time, it became one of the world's most important city. And water was its lifeline, basically. Dhaka is basically uh, based on rivers. And you'll be surprised to know that uh, there are more than 50 major river channels coming from Himalayas uh, through Bangladesh to the Bay of Bengal. So, so you know, the Bangladesh is the largest delta on earth. And all about, you know, uh, delta is about water. The vegetation grows beautifully. We have water a lot, basically. Every aspect of Bangladesh is, is, is basically based on water. Many people talking about urban planning because our cities are really a mess. Uh, traffic congestion, uh, growth of population, uh, lack of uh, uh, jobs even in the villages. So all the you know, pressure coming onto the cities. So t cities are becoming very cramped. There are slums are also. It's, it's a huge cry now in Bangladesh. The landscape of Dhaka has changed a lot and it's not very positive. It's not very positive. We are losing our greens. And as, as a city, I think we need to have at least 30% green as your breathing purpose. And the open fields like, like your lungs to, to breathe. That we have lost a lot. I think we have not more than uh, maybe hardly uh, less than 10% green we have nowadays, uh, which is very, very um, miserable, which is very poor, which is very uh, shocking for us. Uh, but fortunately, um, uh, we realized, the people of the country realized uh, that uh, highly dense a country, a city, needs definitely green for sustainability. For example, nowadays government is trying hard, the activists are trying hard, and architects are becoming activists uh, nowadays to protect the environment. So we are reclaiming, you know, we are uh, regenerating the lost, uh, the linkage of water linkages in the city. And we have few projects, the young architects are working there to, to regenerate uh, the ambience of the city getting back the water bodies, getting back the greeneries, getting back the open spaces. So that has been started. So we have started reversing our situation from bad to good nowadays. And I'm very much hopeful about that. When I gradually uh, absorbed that uh, I'm not an artist only, I'm an architect also, then I started looking around, uh, what is architecture basically? And I started roaming around the world. I was uh, looking at looking the projects of other architects. And I realized that architecture is not just, uh, just a personal uh, expression of thing. It's rather expression of a, of a society. It's a social phenomena rather than appearance of personal understanding. So when, when you talk about so social aspects, then sociology comes, and then psychology of the people comes, and the relationship with the land and uh, the architecture and the material, the, like water, just beautiful water, the trees uh, and the building and the street uh, and the piazzas and, 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 the, and footpaths. So all, all basically together becomes architecture. It's, it's all, all about the atmosphere, the, the surroundings, the context is all together architecture. Then I started thinking uh, uh, we have a responsibility, a social responsibility. And then we need to understand what type of architecture uh, we need to do on a particular place. So if it is Bangladesh, then, then we have a history. Like, like Italy, we have a hundred, I mean, thousands of years old history. 
So if I forget the history, then I'm disconnected. I'm rootless. I'll be, I'll be nowhere simply. When I started my office in 1995, I don't know other countries, uh, but in my country at the time, uh, there's nothing such like green architecture, the parameter, how to do the green architecture, nothing was that time actually, it was absent. But if you look at my office name, Shatoto, and architecture for green living, it uh, hasn't come from today's typical green buildings idea. Rather, it came from my passion. As a painter, when I see my country, the vegetation grows beautifully. It's so obvious that when I started, that it was obvious for me that I'll be, I'll be thinking of very much uh, connected to my land. So green came out like that. It's not like that today's green architecture situation. But it has similarities, definitely. Uh, we work with, uh, with the natural ventilation, we work with the flow of water, we work with the vegetation, planting, to reduce the consumption of power, the electricity, to reduce the carbon footprint. These are all happening even without uh, ticking up the marks, ticking up the boxes that we need to achieve all these things to get the points for green architecture. We were doing for a long time these things. So there's no the conflict between two things, but definitely I, I never started exactly the way green building is going on like today. Uh, this is how I think I can explain my, my understanding about green architecture. Uh, definitely Majar Islam is the key figure, is the protagonist and a father figure, father architects of all architects of our country because I think he is not only a visionary architect, he was uh, an architect with nobili nobility, with integrity. He started his practice as a, as a modernist, but actually he was not a modernist. He was a critically modernist, basically. Uh, but when he found, after a few works, that to change the people, the society, architecture is not enough. And gradually shifted to politics. But Maja Islam, who never took any advantage from his profession, architecture, for politics, or politics for architecture. That's why, after doing some of the fantastic work, architectural work, he never got job because he was very honest. He was not going to compromise for anything. The only vision was to do good to the society. The greatness of Majah Islam definitely influenced us a lot. Without Majah Islam, we cannot think of ourselves. And then Louis Khan came into scenario and he did his masterpiece in Bangladesh, the parliament building. That influenced us so much, so much. His use of brick, use of concrete, use of water, all you see very contextual and simultaneously very prominent. It's it just not, you know, merging him into the context, rather is a complement to the context and architecture. So this powerful architecture influences our lot. And these, these, are the, these, people, these two people definitely 
is the is the is the master of uh, in my life definitely and of course i i would like to mention glen market another person i would like to mention professor samsul waris another uh, wonderful person so these are the people basically influenced me a lot to to proceed with architecture for bangladesh uh, material selection is one big issue because when we do select material we need to think about uh, the availability of the material whether it's contextual or not and then we have our very critical climate and we have a earthquake zone and we have a huge population and a small land concrete is very much used material in bangladesh traditionally if you see louis icahn's project he he selected concrete because it has the strength to take care of the uh, earthquake uh, uh, problem uh, it can go up in a small land it can go up it has the ability to take care of the lateral load because we have uh, generally we have like uh, 200 km per hour lateral load wind load so which material is uh, is has the ability to take care of those things and then the brick brick is a very much local material is just from bangladesh basically historically mughal pre mughal period is all about brick uh, mostly so uh, this two material has lot of connection with the history with the sociology and and people's affiliation people's familiarity with the material and think about um, climatology uh, we have a very high high moisture like uh, 80 90% moisture and temperature goes up sometime like 35 to 40 degrees celsius in the summer it is best for us to use exposed concrete and exposed brick which breathes basically and keep building of uh, 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 sustainable for every architect uh, his the spirit of the land where he or she belongs is very very important uh, particularly uh, since i am from bangladesh bangladesh is a land of uh, dynamics basically in monsoon when it starts raining almost two third of the country's land goes under water the whole country is like a water scape is a is a water is the major element of landscape and same land after two months when monsoon goes off and leaves behind uh, the alluvial soil very fertile alluvial soil and then immediately after just one or two more months it becomes absolutely green a patch green and crops grown up and moving with the wind is this is such a beautiful thing a rivers and like a, a intricate pattern is moving hundreds of rivers moving and it's shifting also it sometimes is is a pain for us because uh, it breaks uh, the ages of uh, the land and people started losing their houses even but the dynamics of the land is very much uh, uh, alive and dynamic so from this country when we do architecture we just cannot ignore it simply we 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 want to understand the land we want to understand the 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 whole landscape of the country so this is how i think i love to do architecture and i think architecture needs to be needs to be uh, done in the same fashion in any parts of the world we talk about madonna residence which we did quite long back like 2000 year 2000 in a neighborhood 
where the typical thinking of the people was every house needs to have a high boundary wall uh, and you know the boundary wall has an interesting meaning. Uh, the semiotics, the semiology is very interesting here. Uh, if you put a high boundary wall and sometimes you see some barbed wire on the, on the boundary wall and sometimes written be aware of dog, you know. This basically all to make other people outside that we don't trust you. It's, it's a message like that, that we don't trust you, we don't respect you, don't come close to the house, uh, it will scratch you by the bird wire, the dog will bite you. So this sort of funny and uh, interesting negotiation and relationship going on between the passerby and the house owner, not at all good for the society. It's, it will gradually uh, make the society vulnerable and disperse and, and is broken. So we just identified one element, the boundary wall, is symbolical, just remove it from the society. So f we did that project with that intention, we removed the boundary wall, we placed low sitting benches, uh, just low height brick walls, uh, which is people can sit, people can see the garden, it is took over by the gardens, and, and the whole house becomes part of the city. So it's a dialogue between the city and the passerby, the house owner is like very friendly. Uh, you can sit there, you can see the beautiful garden over there, and we, we do respect you, uh, we do trust you. So this is how we can make our society more strong, more connected, for a better, better living environment in the city. Why we do architecture? Uh, why we do painting? Why we do uh, uh, we write poem? What the reason? To me, is always the center is the human being. We do everything for the people. I quoted the the example of Van Gogh, who wrote a letter, uh, who wrote many letters to his brother Theo. In one letter, he talked about he wrote that. There is nothing more artistic than to love people. If you consider the context, a person who is almost uh, deprived from the society, was not uh, regarded by the society at the time, he was in pain, he killed himself in one stage. Even then, this person who was unable to s sell his paintings, except one painting, this person, even all the pain having inside, he wrote, there is nothing more artistic than to love people. But who never got love from the people? So, to me, this is a, this is amazing sentence. We are getting love from the people, maybe less or maybe more. But whether we are loving people, so every, every professional professions, ultimate goal is to serve the nation and serve the nation means serve the people. So to me, serving uh, through architecture to the people is the, is the ultimate goal. This is how I think that we need to do architecture for the people. <laughs>